Welcome to this video on how to compute composite reliability coefficients. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as factor analysis, structural equation modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my newsletter and additional videos and workshops that you can find there. Those of you who are familiar with this channel know that typically when I show something in a software program I show it in M+. But today I want to show you something in SPSS and that is how you can obtain composite reliability coefficients in SPSS for a set of measurements. Why is this something that we would care about? Composite reliability is useful when you have a test or scale that consists of multiple components, for example, subscales, subtests, test halves, multiple items, and so on. And you want to know how reliable is the composite or the sum or average of these components. Then that is something that is or can be more difficult to determine in structural equation modeling software such as M+, where there's not a direct option to say, I want the composite reliability. So <clears throat> a program like M+, will give you the reliability estimate for the individual indicators as R squared, as part of the standardized um, solution, but it will not give you composite reliability in many cases. And so I want to show you here in SPSS a straightforward way in which you can obtain composite reliability. And then also I want to discuss a little bit what you should and shouldn't do, so to say, or what a proper approach is to using these options here in SPSS. So for example, in this data set here, I have four variables, y1, y2, y3, and y4, and they represent the scores on four subscales of a test of numerical processing speed. So those are points obtained in this test on four different subscales. This is a unidimensional test. I already fit a single factor confirmatory factor analysis model in the M plus software and a single factor model fit these data well. So I, I'm assuming they are unidimensional they measure all those four subscales measure a single common factor of numerical processing speed. And so now I'm interested in knowing how reliable would the overall sum score be if I summed up those four columns for each individual and calculated an overall sum score, then how reliable would that be? The reliability of these subscores was already computed in M plus as R squared, but now I want to know how reliable is my composite. And so in SPSS, I have a straightforward option for that under analyze and then scale reliability analysis. You can see that when you open that option, there's already a default approach, so to say, or default composite reliability coefficient that you will get, and that is Cronbach's alpha. So the Cronbach alpha coefficient is used here under model, so say, as the default. And that is something that has caused some confusion in practice for many years because SPSS calls this a model, and it really is not a model in terms of the underlying psychometric theory, which is classical test theory. Classical test theory does not know or have a model that's called alpha. So in classical test theory, we have different measurement models, such as a model of tau parallel tests, a model of strictly tau parallel tests, a model of tau equivalence, model of essential tau equivalence, and a model of congeneric um, tests or congeneric variables. And so those are models, measurement models that can be tested. And each model is associated with a um, composite reliability coefficient that is appropriate under a given model. And so the problem in SPSS is that SPSS does provide model tests for different models such as the parallel model and the strict parallel model but it does not provide currently at least a test for the model that underlies Cronbach's alpha and it doesn't even tell you which model it is that underlies Cronbach's alpha and so there's here a confusion that arises from the fact that SPSS 
call some of the psychometric models by their actual names and others not. So here, for example, it leaves us in the dark as to which model underlies Cronbach's alpha. And so I'm going to tell you, so say what models those are. So for alpha to be appropriate, your variables would have to follow the measurement models of tau equivalence or essential tau equivalence of classical test theory. And so that means that in order for alpha to be an appropriate measure of composite reliability, those test score variables here would have to follow a single factor model with equal loadings. So tau equivalence means that the variables share the exact same true score variable and that implies that the factor loadings on a single factor model would all have to be equal. So you can test that for example in M plus by fitting a single factor model in which all loadings are fixed to one. Then you have tau equivalence or essential tau equivalence depending on whether you estimate the intercepts or means we could say for the variables freely or whether you constrain the means to be uh, equal. So strict tau equivalence means that you have equal loadings and the means are constrained to be equal and essential tau equivalence means you do have equal loadings but the means are estimated freely. I also have videos on those models and how they are fit in M plus. If you're interested in that check out my playlist for classical test theory in M plus and there I discuss this in greater detail. And so what this means is that for tau equivalence and essential tau equivalence, SPSS does not provide a model fit test here. You have to test these models yourself in, for example, M plus to see if they fit. And SPSS will give you Cronbach's alpha no matter whether these models fit the data or not. Now, this is different for the tau parallel and strictly tau parallel models for which SPSS does provide a chi-square test of model fit. So this is some inconsistency in the SPSS programming here, so to say, because it really makes no sense to have it this way. It should say um, tau equivalence, essential tau equivalence, and a tau congeneric, and then parallel and strict parallel, and it should be consistent in giving you a model fit test for each model, and then the composite reliability estimates and other output. And so that's why, um, or one reason why a lot of people are confused about this and why Cronbach's alpha is often misapplied because you can apply it to measures that do not follow uh, tau equivalence or essential tau equivalence and you wouldn't even know it because there's no model fit test here. So what does this mean? So this means that the in the first step you should apply the models, the appropriate models of classical test theory to these data in, for example, M plus, and then see are these measures tau equivalent or essentially tau equivalent or not. And that's what I did here. And I found out that these four scales follow the model of essential tau equivalence. So when I fit a single factor model with equal loadings in M plus, that model fits the data well. And so therefore, I am allowed, so to say, to compute Cronbach's alpha for these subscales, it does make sense. So let's take a look at what happens when we apply alpha here. In SPSS, you can see we get an output and it's pretty straightforward. You get the number of valid cases, in this case, 466 cases. There wasn't any missing data here. And then you can see Cronbach's alpha is 0.88 for these four subscales. And in this case, it's interpretable because I already know that the model of essential tau equivalence here fits these data. So I can meaningfully apply Cronbach's alpha. And it's pretty high. So the reliability of the composite of the sum of those four subscales is pretty high. 88% of the variance in the sum score is true score variance. Only 12% is measurement error variance. Now let's take a look at the other options here as well in SPSS and clarify what else you find here. A relatively new option here is omega. So what is omega as opposed to Cronbach's alpha? Cronbach's alpha we saw is the appropriate composite reliability coefficient when the measures are tau equivalent or essentially tau equivalent, meaning when they measure a single common factor with equal loadings. 
Now, omega is a composite reliability coefficient for a slightly less restricted case, and that is when the variables only follow the classical test theory model of congeneric variables. So congeneric measurement means that they still measure a single common factor, so meaning they're still unidimensional, but they can have different loadings. So different factor loadings um, because they maybe have different scaling, they on, come in different units of measurement and so on. So for measures that are only congeneric, you could use that option and not alpha. And that would make sense because alpha is a lower bound only for congeneric measures, meaning that alpha could underestimate the reliability of the composite if the measures are only congeneric but not tau equivalent or essentially tau equivalent. Now, once again, SPSS will not give you a test of model fit, so you can always apply omega and you'll always get an omega estimate, or pretty much always, but not a model fit test. So it will not allow you to test the congeneric model here under this option, which is unfortunate. But let's take a look at this as well. When we pick here model omega, which again isn't a model, it's a coefficient. And so omega gives us the same result in this case, 0.88. It makes sense because these variables are essentially tau equivalent. So Kronbach's alpha would be also appropriate here. So the result is the same in this case here. And so now again, you would want to test first that the models are congeneric because that could still be violated um, in, in, uh, in any situation. And SPSS does not give you a model fit test here for these types of models. But it is practical to compute these coefficients once you have tested the congeneric model and or the essential tau equivalence model. Now let's take a look at another option here as well so that you can see the differences. So what if we picked the parallel model for these data, which really is a model. So that's a model of classical test theory where it implies a single factor model with equal loadings and equal error variances. And so let's see what SPSS gives us in that case. You can see here that in that case, we get a test of model goodness of fit. It's a chi-square test that is here, the value of which here is 26.556. The degrees of freedom for this model are eight degrees of freedom. And we have a p-value that's smaller than 0.001. So, this is really what should be done for all the options here. So now SPSS behind the scenes fit a single factor confirmatory factor analysis model with equal loadings and equal error variances to these data and determined that this model does not fit. So these variables are not parallel in the sense of um, classical test theory. And so therefore, this model shouldn't be used. Now you can see here that there's also a composite reliability given for the scale called reliability of the scale. And in this case, it's the same as what we got through Kronbach's alpha and McDonald's omega 0.88. So there's not a difference in this case, but there could be because these measures really are not in line with this model. This model is rejected for these data because the chi-square test is significant. So Really, what I would like to see is that in the future, SPSS would add those types of model goodness of fit tests also for the alpha option and for the omega option so that the relevant measurement models could be tested first because otherwise people might misapply these coefficients. Oftentimes you see that people fit Kronbach's alpha or not fit or, or co compute Kronbach's alpha or McDonald's omega for scales that are not unidimensional where the items or subscales measure multiple factors and then that doesn't make any sense and it really doesn't have an interpretation as a coefficient for a multi-dimensional scale with multiple factors and so therefore these options in SPSS are partially deficient, so to say. They are partially confusing because of the lack of model fit tests for omega and alpha. Nonetheless, they are useful if you know what you're doing. So if you first determine the model that is relevant for your scale and then you 
pick the relevant composite reliability coefficient, then these options in SPSS are quite practical because with just a few clicks you get your composite reliability and as long as you know to, to pick or which coefficient to pick for your case, then this is a good option. I hope you found this video useful to learn a little bit more about composite reliability and the options that you have here in SPSS. If you liked the video, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you next week.